on top and they got a 7-8 but I still can't extend the same underdog grace to Parabellum and I I say that with immense reticence I love Spiker I've casted Spiker for four not four three years now in the amateur scene and I have immense respect for players like Laxing and Skies who've been in the scene for a long time but this roster I think needs a little bit more time to cook and a baptism against OXG is not going to get them where they need to be today. Fair with some smart bans to start us off as we do get ourselves into that. Knocking out the Nook from the attacking side, Oxygen makes heavy use of that one, so generally still a great ban, but overall definitely targeted towards the Oxygen roster more so than not. Dokabi being used in similar fashion as well. There she is, still finds quite a bit of use for this map specifically to burn out some of those positions in a bit of a tight scenario where drones are not able to accomplish that for you. For the defensive side of things, Azami once again kind of goes without saying, but once more that utility is second to none in terms of its contributions to slowing down the pace on the attacking side as a solo player, and you can say somewhat of a similar thing about Valkyrie as well. They're a very comfortable pick, and lots of intel being given over to the defense if she is allowed to be played in here. So once again, Solus is left in play, though, because of that. I mean, didn't see too much play, I feel like, on that Oregon game previously, but if you want to do some of that damage to OXG's drone economy, hamper Newer's ability to get some of those entries, or OXG's ability to set him up for those entries, never going to be a bad pick but on Oregon there's just a lot of options that you can't Attack pass up you've got those banshees those mute jammers and of course that smoke that will perennially be in your lineup on Oregon especially on basement so as might be foregone in favor of something that lends itself to the very turtly bunker nature of the basement bomb site one thing I will give OSG though to switch sides and to talk about they definitely seem to be the team that was the most active in their usage of Brava, though some teams later on gave them a run for their money. And I hope we see them use it to great effect, because Brava has gotten more and more impactful, I feel, as the day goes on. And I was excited by their very, very broad usage of her earlier, and I hope we see more of it in this match. Hopefully going to be the case. It certainly seems like it will be, based on the first round we got here. Is obviously Fox going to pick directly into the Brava, so we'll get some immediate use out of that from the oxygen side of things. Alongside the Brava, though, we do have a pretty usual lineup of operators, though, for the attacking side, and you could say pretty much the same thing for the defense. Still seeing that Ella pick continue to elevate, however, and once again, she has gotten quite a bit of a boost recently with those gun changes, so we're seeing her get picked up quite a bit more, specifically for this map as well, just because she has oh, yeah. a lot of play potential with those Gashmots on this map. It's also close quarters fire rate. A lot of like, a lot of like hallways and exactly. stuff where you just get an easy headshot angle against someone. Well, that's actually a good point too. Very long hallways and not a lot of places the attack can fall off of an engagement. So if you send 41 bullets down range, someone's probably going to get hit by it. Yup. It's also just, let's be honest, it's one of the more satisfying guns to use in the game. <laughs> it's in my a really, opinion. it's it a pretty feels, straightforward gun. It feels really nice yeah. to use. And we, you, they've got Skies backing them up as well. It's Fish and Skies upstairs right now with the ladder tangling inside a classroom and the ladder being the first pick taken off in the round. C4 flies up and Spiff is just kind of put off by the fact that a teammate threw a C4 <laughs> at him. Maybe they expected Spiff to fall off, but Spiff does not whiff, my friends. He is going to get aggressive. Never mind, he's going to fall off. And that C4 will likely not do much. They'll pretty easily get shot out by anyone from Oxygen when they go for the clearance on that room, so the Nitro. Or just a very confusing distraction more than anything else there from PP. Just gets Oxygen to be like, okay, I don't know why that's there, but sure. Uh, and that will obviously allow for the PB player trying to hold on to security to quickly fall back through the hatch. And more importantly than anything, keep themselves alive here as Oxygen continues the rest of their early clear in this first round. As they attempt to get themselves ready for the descent into the basement. Oxygen have managed to take out one of the more mechanically gifted and aggressive players on Parabellum, being that new pickup of Fish and taking out a good gun as well. Those Grishmots will persist. They do not fully die with him unless he had some in his pocket, but OXG have done what we expect on Oregon. Well, in that now, they'll just bide their time, take the map control, drone things out, decide do we want to push laundry and freezer, do we want to push bunker and back tower, we have an opening pick, so there's a lot of leeway we have now, and Spiker's position very aggressively on Harry Potter. Foxy still has both of his nades, and Newers has one as well. With an EE1D, they could freeze that very player in position, throw a nade down below, or even in a bunker as well. Either of these positions could be targets for the utility from OXG. Spiker continuing to hold the fire position down at the bottom of the back stairs here. Lots of slow bleeding damage has been ticked onto really both teams, but 
only just now going to start to see those kills come forward. Spiker claims one. Two more picked up by the auction side of things, however. So now PB down to only laxing. As well as Spiff trying to hold on to it. Spiff as well. Not long for this world. He quickly goes down to Dream, leaving it all on laxing now, of course. Former teammate of Oxygen trying to clutch this one out. 1v4, but won't even get things started. Sweater quickly completes the rotate through construction. Boxes him out. Prevents any retake whatsoever. Very just clean take by OXG, which of course you'd love to see as the first attacking win on Oregon, first attacking round on Oregon, and a win on basement nonetheless. But the ability to just set a plan and then deal with the problems as they arise is something that on Oregon basement can be a little difficult to do. You had Spiker and Harry Potter, you had somebody in Pillar, and Bunker Control still firmly held by Parabellum, and yet none of it seemed to really matter for OXG. They managed to land a nade on that blue doorway, deal with the player inside a pillar, and then take out the Bunker player before he manages to reinforce the wall. OXG went about that in a very standard way. They didn't reinvent the wheel or spin some new strategy. They said, okay, we have four or nades, let's throw them into those power positions, and if we get kills, we'll push off of that. And it was very simple, and once they got that elbow control, that was an easy round victory to clean up. So good follow through from Oxygen, taking pretty straightforward control of things on the basement attack for the first round. Uh, we do have a bit of a tech pause, but it looks like we are, I believe, done with it. Yep, there we go, back into the game. And now PB looking to correct on things, however, as they go for an immediate retry on the basement hold. Despite how one side, attackers. at least for me, things look for Oxygen in that previous round, they feel they can make a correction from the second attempt, so let's see if they can get that job done now. We'll make some smaller change up to the line. Now they'll bring the mirror this time and that'll shift the Malusi from Skies onto Fish. We'll now bring those Banshees. We, because of that chain where Malusi became a three armor, it is a little bit more difficult to roam with her now, but with that MP5, she can still be very good. Maybe you put him inside of security this time, close by the hatch. Maybe put some ADSs upstairs. We don't have that magnet, those magnets anymore either. So the amount of projectile denial you have is not nearly as much as it was before. Unfortunately, as well for OX, we did not see much play from Robber, at least we didn't see her do all too much or have all that much of an impact. And not entirely likely we'll see it again, but maybe we see a Banshee get hacked and somebody on Back Tower Stairs uh, caught in a little bit of a trap for the attack. Will be fun to see, of course, as those trip-ups are very much the trademark usage for Brava at this point, but haven't really been able to, as you mentioned, see a whole lot of that play potential echo out just as of yet here. The last round it was more, I think he was out of range for a lot of the stuff he Probably. wanted to steal, and obviously if he tried to move the drone forward, there was like a player waiting around the corner that would have knocked it out. We saw that at least once when he tried to push into construction, I think, and take out a piece of utility that was on the far side of the back stairs, but I imagine he will run into some similar issues this time if the team tries to execute in a similar way. Well, he also could be using it for things that aren't necessarily readily visible to us. I mean, maybe he's yep. going around hacking default cams, setting up flank cameras that you know, well, setting out flank cams with those default cams that you no longer need to have drones for, or they get shot, which of course is the difficult fate that those Brava Kludge drones sometimes run into. That's why you've got multiple. That's why you don't have just one. As OXG take control of that top floor, Parabellum have seeded most, if not all of it, save for one, one sweet summer child. Fish with that three armor is doing something that I can say that Fish does quite frequently, which is sit in T3 and bait. Well, let's see how much he's going to be able to bait out in terms of both time and potentially player count. Drones from below should have just spotted him with that jump up there. We'll know he's indeed in that position. And it, it works out. There we go. The bait is successful as he gets a peek from Newers as well. Takes him down. No. Newers so far a little bit of a rough start to the game, but of course only on the second round. So plenty of time for him to make that up. Oh, a little bit of a... Huh? Yeah, I'm not sure how he ended up missing it there, but just ended up falling a little bit too far to the right, I think, and then dropping down to their level. So it takes a smidgen of damage. A little to leave him in a disadvantageous position when he takes the next fight against Sweater. Unlucky, loses life, but look at what he's gained. A minute and 50 seconds wasted for his team. Not precisely, but since the beginning of the round. And he's taken out the other main set of nades and one of the most prolific players on OXG, Demos, favorite in fact. And well, to be honest, my favorite to watch on OXG as well. Without those sets of nades, with only one remaining, you only have Yaga to try and deal with Laxing, who's now getting aggressive on those back tower stairs, and you're not able to mount the same pressure because of how much time Fish was able to waste and Parabellum was able to waste inside a big tower. If Laxing can get this kill right here, that could have changed things, but now OXG have what they need. Yaga wins it out instead, although he'll take that small amount of damage. 
as a result of still taking part of the shotgun pellets. Unfortunately, the stairs, I think, ends up eating most of that right there. Spiff ready for the potential challenge to come his way and just swings for it as well. Catches Yaga dead to right. Mid-transition down the final. Steps going their way into the basement here. The rest of the team ready to work their way forward, but Skies as well with a well-placed Nitro drops the case. Toxic Big goes right on top of it to prevent an immediate pickup. Sweater is all that's left. PB finds revenge for the second round here and ties us up at one-to-one. -one. Such a simple solution orchestrated by Parabellum, and yet look and witness the effect it had. All they really did, all they really did, sure, they changed up some operators, sure, they had a Mira, but all they really did was put fish in Big Tower. They dangled something in front of OXG, and OXG took the bait, hook, line, and sinker. Because once fish took down Newers, and they needed to spend a whole 30 more seconds trying to clear out the Malusi, they went from having over half the round left to having just barely a minute to even open up some of those hatches and then just start working down those stairs, and they were now working at half of the frag grenades they had previously, and all because Parabellum just put one guy in Big Tower and OXG got fixated on it. Dream with a showing here if he ends up using it. We'll have to wait and see over the next 20 seconds if he doesn't re-pick away from the guard hook He's is potentially in play. Ah, it's gonna go away. It's almost always gets re-picked when it's shown for the first time. That's not freighter that when it's actually used, at least for me, from my experience, it's almost always re-picked into as it's one you want to try and hide. So the Capitao is what gets brought out instead Five for Dream there. Before insertion. Also, sadly, we had an Osa for a second, and I've not seen a good stage plant and stage execute in a while. Would have liked to see it. You also see, I mean, not just stage, but also see that split wall opened up, that right panel by Garage, and sadly, again, no Osa means it could still happen, but not in the same way. It's always fun watching defensive teams wrangle with that shield and sometimes fail miserably. This time, we'll see Parabellum stationed over by that shower side and OXG. I mean, they have a lot of options at their disposal, not really pigeon pigeonholing themselves into one take, likely try to focus on clearing out some of that upstairs pressure just because of how many players are up there and the reward to be gained if they can use those frag grenades or just even pinch a couple players out. Just to bounce off your Osa point as well, would have been a great round also to bring her when you consider the kind of lack of utility that PB have right now to take out those shields when you look at the fact they've got point. one impact and one nitro for the entirety of this round. Very good chance it will be used before the execute even happens and it's going to be that very late point where we actually see those shields come out for the first time. So there's a good chance that they would be uncounterable by the members of PB, but obviously not going to end up seeing that on this round. Also not seeing much, at least, vertical pressure at the moment. Sky's creeping down main stairs. OXG need to have a handle on this because with those split walls opened up, you pretty much know they're going to commit to that. And now Laxing, not Sky's on the flank, but Laxing in the sight, just brazenly swings classroom. And Sweater's buddy is inside of Garage on drone. No one to get that trade, though likely, it'd be unlikely for anyone to get that trade anyway. But now OXG stalled once again. If Parabellum are going to win these defenses, which to be fair, weren't their problem in the earlier game, but running up the scoreboard with some poor attacks, maybe to come if they have not improved from earlier, will be imperative. Starting OXG on the back foot, stopping them from getting their plan underway and forcing them to reconsider things will be great in the long run. A lot of inactivity from Oxygen, however, after losing that initial player. Sweater's gone down and they seem to have been very hesitant to move beyond this due to the multiple positions that Parabellum are continuing to maintain both in the first and second floor, of course, here. It is a very difficult matrix to tear apart, and they are just not finding the right puzzle piece to get this one started. Unfortunately, Foxe finally claims the first kill of the round, but it's at a cost of one of his own teammates as well. Down to two now, considering both Foxe and Newers. Newers does pick up his own personal first on this round. Spiff as well gives himself away in this fight a bit prematurely. Newers trying to grapple control over, but he's got two different angles to work with here, both the freezer push, which we saw from that player's POV, and another one on the inside of security, too. I want to see OXG reset a little bit here. They don't have a lot of time, but they have maybe about 15 seconds. Maybe Foxy could hit a rotate or just bait a little bit. This is still winnable, especially with Fish and Spiff on such low HP. Newers has an idea somebody might be Freezer, but he just sends it into the site. If he can get the kill here, this is still winnable and a potential attacking win for OXG. Fox with a nice peek, picks up one, Fish goes down. Now the numbers are finally even, down to a 2v2. The team as well with the confidence to push back into Kitchen. But here we go, Sky's gone to notice so far. Newer's attempts to react, but he's far too slow. Goes down and Fox now in a very dangerous situation, gonna be forced into the plant. Leaves room open for the rotate here. And at the same time, he's gonna walk right up, shut him down and give the round over to PB. Again, able to get that kill early on. Laxing not let OXG get set up in their initial plan for how to attack meeting and kitchen, swings that breach, risks the fact that 
Sure, he's getting aggressive. Sure, he's peeking the very place the attack just entered. But classroom is not exactly a big place. Somebody's not going to be sitting on Sweater's body, ready to get his trade. It's still a gamble, but one with some logic to it. So he gets aggressive, takes him down, and now OXG have to get the remaining control on the back foot. And they even rotate away from a split take later on to try to go for meeting. And then Parabellum continue to get aggressive, deal with the player inside of dining. And this is the Parabellum we're going to see again, like Mirage, not at all worried because of their loss earlier. This could still be a close one if Parabellum can run up this scoreboard on defense. Let's see if PB can continue to make this run and once again continue to surprise the audience at home, much like a lot of our teams that had a bit of a bumpy start today. Now finding their footing much more solidly as they move into the later games. The tail end of broadcast stay here. PB with the lead. The only question is can they keep it? Ox are looking to make up the difference here. Let's look for another attack. It's the first floor hold in cafeteria as well as kitchen here. The second first floor site we're going to see Parabell deploy themselves to now. First team. Maybe allergic to dorms today, I guess. <laughs> it's just not working out, I guess. I, 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 I honestly just saw the bomb sites in this part of the map, and I was like, oh, I guess it's dorms, and it's not. So went meeting hall kitchen, then meeting, or kitchen and dining. Attackers have located All right. It's one of the very few times I've seen a team actually use both of the first floor sites as well. It's usually just one or the oh, other, yeah. and that's it. You do not touch the other one. I don't know if I've actually seen that before. I think I've seen it like once before. Well, I mean, and it was like USN games, if I remember correctly, that it happened in. Those are the peak of competitive. That was, I think it was like even before the rework, if I remember correctly. Oh, that's that was a very interesting decision by them then. Oh, no! Oh, actually, oh, yes for Fish. Just barely escapes from behind that deployable shield. This often is a deceptively difficult position to clear for the attack. You always think, oh, you've got the EMPs, you've got the ADSs. It's so easy to clear out Fish. And yet somehow, no matter the team, this player in Small Tower always seems to survive for a little bit too long. No magnets, only the ADSs, but now Newers doesn't get dissuaded. He immediately hops on in, and Yaga got the opening pick as well. This is such an easy frag for OXG to get to make this a 5v3, and yet Fish persists. Fish continues to maintain that defensive presence. No strike forwards at working for him just as of yet, but gives it away as he moves over towards the window. It's a direct cue for Newers to take him down outright, so Early start works out very well for auction as they bring things down to a 5v3. And now we're going to see these Osa barricades end up going down as well to establish permanent positioning for the attack. And they'll continue to find prowess from those positions. Another kill marked by Newers down to only two now for the defense. A lot of pressure put on Spiff right now because Skies will likely be reluctant to give up control of that hatch. Maybe he'll move down to white stairs to support him as well. But that will definitely open up a plant spot for OXG to move on in. And with so much time as well, Unfortunately, this is one of those rounds that will likely require OXG to make some slip-ups if Parabellum want to close it out. Yaga has bottom white. They have that small tower control. They now have the 1v5 advantage. They're not exactly methodical. They're not let, letting anything slip by. They do let skies rotate up, but again, we're on the brink of a flawless round in a post plant for the attack on the offsite they could easily get a flawless for that one. Even at the hacked Brava can on the on the uh, bulletproof deeper into the site there too, just to catch anyone that was going to rotate. They had the everything. Kitchen. Yep, had everything built up perfectly in that round's auction, quickly correcting for the bit of a rough run they went on here in the middle of the half, and now tie us up yet again, heading into the final two rounds of it before these teams switch sides. Basement is up on the deck yet again for Parabellum here as they'll finally return to it. Of course, lost it in that first round, managed to bring it back on the second without putting so Attackers much focus on that bunker. Bomb. And instead, just putting fish upstairs. That's it. All he needed to do. But I don't think that OXG are going to let that one slip through the cracks again because that's maybe something that trips you up one time. It's not the kind of thing you're going to let slip by a second time when all you need to do to counter it is throw a drone up a big tower, find he's there, go up on the rappel. What's his teammates going to do? Support him from T2 by looking up completely vertically? Very unlikely. So Parabellum will have to find a new way to stall time, but if they find one that's successful, even if it ends up just being playing the site and messing OXG around with these black mirrors, that could be enough, but they certainly can't run back the same round to deep realm they did last time. Let's see now as PB looks Attackers to maintain their the lead that they gained the earlier on. OXG now bouncing back quite quickly. Losing up the first round, but then losing the two rounds after that. And then winning the most recent one to tie us up yet again. 
Very pivotal round here to decide who could potentially at least have the opportunity to take that advantage at the halftime switch. PB, of course, the team that wants to claim it for themselves, being on the defensive side where teams are generally able to take further control. But with the struggles that's happening, especially on the second floor, that lead is not so much assured, it seems, the matches that we played out in Oregon here today. Oxy take an early lead to map control. Sort of opening things up very quickly, not leaving anything to chance that there might be somebody lurking down below. Spotted on that default cam, but I imagine given the bevy of noises made over on that top floor, Harry had an idea that somebody might have ended up there. And they've all pulled back down to the site. So OXG have all of that second floor and first floor control, but this is where the strategy comes in for how Bar Parabellum will try to waste time for OXG, and it is very much these black mirrors. Likely first and foremost, laxing behind that freezer mirror. He's got the freezer hatch electrified, but has to worry about his laundry. That's where Skies comes into play to watch that very angle with his own mirror window. Again, OXG have so much time at their disposal to open up these hatches, use their four frag grenades or flashbangs, maybe even Bravas, not to hack the mirror windows, of course, maybe hack those ADSs to make the frag grenades a little easier to throw. But Parabellum have set their strategy, and for us, it's a very passive one, very patient one, the one that if OXG also maybe stall out, could really be painful. Tardy of OXG looking to try and line themselves up. The Brava drone as well, looking for the opportunity to try and hack out that electric wall if it can be found. Fortunately, it's taken way too long to notice it, so they're instead just going to quickly knock out this Banshee, reverse that one, prevent any aggressive swings towards the doorway that they are now maintaining, of course. Still can see quite a bit of play potential in terms of aggressive swings to come out from that side construction hall or the main doorway, which is being actively defended by PB. They're looking to deny this entry outright. Yaga tries to take a duel against Spit, and both players end up losing a considerable amount of HP. They will back away from each other at the end of the duel. Still waiting to give, like, likely be a gunfight. Depending on which way it goes, it could decide this game, whether it be Parabellum winning with Fish and Harry Potter, or OX, she's storming through Bunker, but Spiker has this close angle with the shotgun, with time low and the angles at 5v5. Spiker making it a 5v4. This is likely looking like a PB round, but Sweater has something to say about it. Sweater still trading it back. Now Spiker waiting for his opportunity to claim a second kill. Dodges the flash, repeats right back out into it. Full tunnel vision from Oxygen working their way in towards Pillar instead of trying to play the side hall here. Sky steals one away as Yaga tries to push back Bears. Laxing as well here with the Nitro. Is able to knock out Foxe. Puts the numbers of advantage back into the favor of PB. And it seems like they've nearly sealed the deal here. Spiker gets one more on top of it to lock in the round for PB and the 3-1 lead along with it. I gotta say, very risky play from Parabellum right there. The shield is destroyed destroyed and they never reinforce the elbow wall. Now, had Spiker died, and let's say instead of the two players from OXG that pushed in Bunker going into Pillar, maybe they try and push Spiker and open up that angle. That would have been a big problem for Parabellum, but the calculation was made to not reinforce it, and it's understandable why. There's very low time, and let's say OXG do do a push up. Most of the site and laundry side pressure is non-existent for OXG and still rock solid for Parabellum. They could get that trade, so for OXG, the safer bet was to go pillar, try to get the bomb down in default. Unfortunately for them, there was a C4, and Spiker never reinforced the wall. She was able to continuously put pressure on their position and really round out was a big team effort in a very good anchor hold for Parabellum. He looks to solidify their half here with one more site being locked in, but it is that second floor hold, which has been an incredibly daunting site to try and maintain for so many teams here, not even just in this matchup, but overall today in the Oregon matches that we have had. A couple repicks end up getting locked in there for the OXG roster. Foxy going over towards a Nomad Sweater, adding the ace into the fold as well for some more direct hard breach. Could potentially expect that bedroom push because of that operator changeup to go over towards him for the hard breach. Especially because Dream can just get into big tower so quickly and immediately open up this wall. Well, not immediately open up this wall, but open it up decently quickly. It should be good. Newers, though. I say I was about to say Newers isn't having the best game so far, but for us, sometimes if Newers isn't dropping 15 kills and five deaths, it seems like he's not having a great game. But he is the opening pick in this round. And for a man that SI was, I believe, like plus 29 on the entry or something like that, in the 20s at SI, you'd hope he'd be winning these opening duels. Of course, in a best of one, anything can happen, and he loses it in this case. 
One set of nades gone, a powerful entry off the board, but more importantly for OXG, as they're likely going for that split take in attic and master bedroom, one player down for it will already be very low resources, and everyone's gone now. Skies has somehow killed two people in showers, and I mean, I guess it's a 2v5, John. Just completely shut down. Not exactly sure what Oxen tries to work towards. They're just a big tower pressure and they commit themselves far too heavily into it or something else goes awry, but it definitely goes poorly. Regardless of the way you try to spin it for Oxygen here. Not down to the 2v5 and still with over half the round to play out. What exactly do these remaining two players try to do? Just not really able to work anything here. As you can see, Dream was going to attempt to group up with Sweater here and make a push through Master Bedroom, but it's obviously a moot point now, as he's alone and can go pretty much anywhere he wants, as he's got to take out the entirety of the enemy team, regardless of the route he takes. Yeah, and he pretty much immediately gets shut down as soon as he does make the entry over there towards Armory. Well, there's a flawless hold there from PB, and they lock in the 4-2 advantage now at halftime. Good final round, I suppose. I honestly don't really know, even know. Definitely, what definitely much more like the mistakes of oxygen right there. I, I, like, oxygen I, definitely like walking right into something. I, I, we, didn't, we didn't obviously see it directly on camera, I, so. I, but. I genuinely don't like. There's just, two people died in showers. <laughs> I don't even know they were holding showers. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know. They were just there. Got to give it to Skies though. Able to get the two piece to round it out and Parabellum get their four two defensive half. Beautiful stuff. That's what we want to hope for. But this is what we wanted to see. Okay, the defenses all good. Got the four two, but. As the desk brought up, Parabellum's attacks were really the problem here. They were really the problem, and I can already hear somebody saying, oh, but it's attacking on Oregon, it's so difficult, we get that. But you're gonna have to play attack at some point. There's Matt's been in the pool. For what, like, the rework version has been like three years now, four years now? Something like that, yeah. Something like that. I wanna say like 2020? Oh, really? everyone, everyone plays Oregon is the point I'm making, yeah. and everyone has played Oregon to some extent for the past three or four years now. And they're a new team. They've got Sky's doing some of the calling, but Spiker also left. aiding in the younger voice and the older voice, both melding on this roster. We want to see, not necessarily if they can win this attack flaw this half flawlessly, but for a team in development, can they make some improvements, defeated. even if they're marginal, with very short notice? And if they can, it might be very impressive, if, even if they lose. Let's see here now, PB can continue their rampage, find some solidity on these attacking rounds, which plagued them in their matchup earlier on today. More importantly, if OXG can wake up a little bit here as well. It's questionable fights more than anything being taken by them over the course of that previous half has left them at a surprising deficit considering the results from PB earlier on and even the results from Octon, of course, against their first game earlier today against Beast Coast. Seniors set up to fend off any aggression that's going to be swung from construction, but obviously not a whole lot of that currently teed up on the PB side of things. So it'll be some time before he finds action. And you can see the same thing for most of the downstairs set up here. PB is just going through their initial clear still. Still acquiring map control. I have a lot of very good pieces of utility as well. They're not rocking the two sets of frag grenades that OXG did, instead just keeping one set on fish. But they brought a lot of useful pieces of utility in turn. Mainly there were terror drones and those EMPs in the hands of Spiker and Laxing respectively. One could deal with any Cade Claws if they were there. Of course, in this case, they're not. But the EMPs could easily also be used for those ADSs and magnets to make Fish's job with those two frag grenades a little easier. No mute as well for Spiker to worry about those with terror drones. So a lot of this utility can be used to great effect. Of course, if it isn't shot or caught by those ADSs or magnets, the Parabellum have a very solid lineup and a lot of time to work with because of OXG's standard passive setup on basement. So it's now this final minute and a half that we need to look at. Where is PB focusing? Where are they starting to move? A lot of pressure over in Freezer right now, so perhaps some will rotate to Laundry later on, but the initial pick, the initial probing for information and weakness will likely occur over there. Like as well, going to try to work some of these repair drones downstairs to knock out the utility, but seeing all of them get countered out, the normal drones also being shot out there by either Yaga or Nuers as they try to pierce their way past Pillar into the actual site setup. The rest of PB, as you were mentioning, is looking to set themselves up towards a laundry as well as freezer take, but Auction have quite a few players standing in the way of that even. Auction kind of expecting a backstairs take from the way that their players are currently set up. Thankfully, that's just a quick adjustment to correct for that. Spiker is certainly keeping that illusion alive or if we head to the final 45 Ooh. seconds, relaxing a very nice find here through the partial breach in one of the electrical walls gets newer is trying to lurk over towards the bottom of back stairs and newer is availing availing himself to a very normal angle but now spiker's position is a lot more important he's not
not going to do much. He's just going to watch the flank. But there's only one person here now. If nobody ever rotates, they know that that remaining defender is in sight. With the 5v4, they can begin to push. Down goes the E-Box hatch player. Down goes the back Stowers player. And it's Spiker, the player in Bunker, that goes down. But everyone who's pushing these main points of entry, back tower, laundry, and freezer, they're the ones winning the fight. Foxay just barely gets one. It's a blood sacrifice. It's all his HP needed just to get one impactless kill and still give Parabellum their first win on attack. PB, a lot of patience to build up to that as well. Really running the timer down to a low point, committing basically no one into the site prior to that one. Just very slowly leaning their players in a position to go for it towards back stairs and, of course, eventually the hatch. And they are able to make things work. Yaga as well, really struggling to try and maintain his position over towards Pillar. We saw him trying to work multiple different players from multiple different angles and just could not connect shots on his spray, which unfortunately contributed quite heavily to the flood from Parabellum as they're able to get more and more control from that backside position. Good timeout for OXG as well. Do not want to prolong any potential damage, either done by things irrespective of sides on those attacks or specifically flaws in those defenses, but you do not have a lot of time with only potentially two rounds left in the game if PB really want to stun us today to let these mistakes simmer and let them grow into even bigger problems. So hopes a redeemer, call the timeout button, try to get things under order. Usually we see teams when they lose this basement site today, they've gone back to it. They haven't switched it up. Sometimes it's been successful. Sometimes it hasn't. I have a feeling in this case, OXG might try it again just because of the reputation basement has. Maybe they get a little bit more aggressive because with Protect a new team, like we saw from Mirage attacker. before, if they are able to get aggressive and harness some of that mechanical skill that they have, PB with a very new calling structure and a lot of players who haven't teamed together before could very well struggle to adapt. So let's see here now as PB gets the lock in two more for themselves. Another retry down in the basement is locked in for Oxygen. Trends one final time, bringing the Goyo and Smoke combo to hopefully delay things a little bit more efficiently when the actual execute comes through. Just on normal operators, without this much delay, they were able to stem the tide down to about the 30 to 45 second mark. So they're hoping the addition of these two utility pieces is going to push it over the edge and allow for them to completely burn out the timer, leave Parabellum struggling to get in, and of course making a whole load of mistakes which will allow them to win out the round on the defensive side. Newers, of course, in this position can be very powerful. I hope he's a little bit more cognizant of the angles he's opening himself to in the future, because if Newers maybe retreats to Pillar, plays a little bit more passively and gets out like he intended, I think that even without, say, the current Goyo changes, for example, or sweater switching to the Goyo, I think that could have wasted a lot more time and been very powerful and potent for OXG, but unfortunately he was caught. So maybe Newers retreats a little earlier when the execute actually hits. Of course, right now, I'm totally fine with him playing to try and shoot some drones on back tower right now. Same with Yaga. Maybe can get an early pick, but in all likelihood, just going to fire some shots. Hopefully get some drones, but now back off as newers will likely do the same in just short order. We'll be left with what we've seen multiple times now today and in the two matchups that rounded out the day. Very slow, early to mid round, and then very quick development in the action in the late round, because right now, Yaga is the last man standing on this realm, and you will likely respectfully, but consciously see this position of the attack. A very inactive round for both teams so far. Snyder is able to get full commitment into an early fight, even with those extensions we were seeing on back and freezer stairs. Yaga has completely given up his bit for it. We're going to see Parabell commit a bit of utility, and that will flush him right back down into the depths of basement. Same can be said for any sort of back stairs pressure. We're going to be getting out of oxygen. Most of the hatchwork now being completed here for Parabella. Getting electrical over here, so they can begin to line themselves up for it, but still under half the round to go. They're not strapped for time just as of yet here, but certainly getting themselves ready for it with a lack of any resistance coming in on the top levels from OXG. A lot of, a lot of focus from OXG being placed on either winning these fights as Parabellum pushed down or letting their utility do the talking. Now, one Vulcan canister was destroyed in the prep phase, if some of you missed it, so that does mean there could be only three on the field right now for Sweater, but even if there's only three, there's still the ADSs, the magnets that have likely not been cleared, and the smoke canisters that only now Dream will begin to use inside a bunker, a spiker, retakes his position from last round right outside. Now, Newers has also positioned himself in Harry Potter. This will likely to be to avoid and give himself an easy path of egress, either away from that meeting angle or up big tower stairs if he wants to get aggressive. 
Dream continuing to position himself right at the entry point here if someone tries to take a risk on dashing through it. Foxy as well, maintaining the similar position that we saw Yaga actually taking up on the previous round. It's Nures as well, playing directly on those back stairs this time. They attempt to flood in through E-Hatch. Skies, though, gets baited into sight because of all the action going on towards back stairs. Yaga knocks him out because of that. Foxy now continuing to maintain pillar position, finds a second personal kill. Sweater picks up the final two, and OXG back in a winning position now as they pick up this round. Such a small adjustment from Newer, such a small adjustment in the geography of his positioning, and yet the impact that it had. Instead of focusing on Spike or on Bunker Door, he focuses on the big tower stairs player, positions himself accordingly to avoid the media angle, and gets the first pick of the round, starting the execute phase on the right foot for OXG. That at that point, Parabellum don't have the easy opening they had before because Newers was the one they were able to take down first on the basement attack they won. And that's when they mounted their E-Box flood, started pushing down back tower stairs and ended up winning the round. Now that opening is not there, now Parabellum begins struggling even more. And because of how much time these teams like to spend getting that map control, not a lot of time to adjust. They change up some of the back stairs positions as well in terms of who is going to be the first player to take a fight from those positions. Two rounds back, of course, it was Yaga doing it, he struggled to maintain it. They put the extra pressure this time on Denours as well as Fox 8, and they have a much better presence that time, holding it back. But Yaga relax a little bit more. He's also able to catch a player this time as he manages to find, I believe it was Skies, dropping in through E-Hatch, being able to take him down and seal the deal on the rest of the round before Oxygen there. Two more rounds, and they will have things tied up at five rounds to all the PB, still with a pretty definitive lead at this point, so a bit more work needs to be done from Oxygen. And of course, they've committed themselves to the second floor. Interesting hard breach setup from Parabellum, rocking the two hard breach charges, but the Hibana as their main primary hard breacher. So, I mean, in terms of the hard breaching resources that they have, they could still do a split take. It wouldn't be a little bit awkward with that Hibana, but it doesn't really matter if Fish is able to get the opening pick on Yaga. Losing out those goo mines maybe will make some of the roamers or the lurkers life a little bit difficult, but it's similar to when we saw something like this happen on Mirage in the previous game. They'll get this opening pick, and then they'll move on as if nothing happened. It's just now they can do everything they were going to do with a body up on the other team. Very nice, very lovely. No one's gonna complain about that. They'll open up the attic wall, start opening up the bedroom wall in about 30 seconds or so. They'll just do what they did before with a man advantage. Very slow play from the OXG side due to the loss of Yogg. Not wanting to take any additional risks here due to what has transpired already on previous rounds. Spider gonna potentially try to line up a bit of action for himself as he's gonna rotate down into the very depths of the basement. So gonna be looking for some late round setup here. The problem is more than likely to counter things for the freezer stairs angle. And that is not gonna be the winning formula to get himself in a position to frag out here. He would have to work himself up laundry instead. Start swing up through the main stairs. They're gonna end up using that Havana, but oh no, most of the ex Kairos end up getting destroyed entirely. Only three of them go off, and there's no additional ones for Skies to even bring out here. So they will not have access to walk in unless they try to put a can opener on it, but nope, out of those as well. So that's not an option either. I mean, one poor intel gathering for Parabellum, not reading into that impact trick, but also that's the problem with only having that Hibana and those hard reach charges as your main source for this site. No other hard reaching bands are on the board. It's a joke nook band game that we have right now. They could have bought Ace, they could have bought Therm. Instead, they tried to unfortunately go only with the half measure, and now they got to push through Attic as a result. But because of that opening pick they have earlier, now with that basically beeline shot on the Dream, taking down the smoke as well, they might just be able to send it and flood it if they go their way and if the aggression is on point. Foxy with the first kill being claimed here. Still keeping the hopes alive for Oxygen as he finds that marker. Viewers with another one as well. That's Case now gone down. Spiker to trade one back against Foxy. Ruse one of the potential holders there. against the Diffuser. He allows them to pick it back up. And Newer is like a bandit. Pops back out. Steals out another one of the members of PB. The Nitro to deny the first attempt at the play with the swing coming around from Spiker. Counters out Newer's entirely. He goes down. Sweater is left alone in the 1v2. Here's the shots coming in with Laxing commits to the fight, giving the round to PB and now map point with it. Really excellent attack right there. Uh, well, ignoring the snafu with the hard breaching, that of course is a mistake, we acknowledged it. Maybe should have brought some different operators to the table, gained some info on the impact tricking. But at that point, again, they realized the situation and they pushed onward. Saw SSG do a similar thing earlier. When Fultz was at the bedroom wall, two of his teammates died and he pushed on through, PB did a similar thing. Except this time they had the advantage. They realized, 
crap. We messed up our hard breaching, but we have a 5v3. Let's just try to flood in. Let's play man advantage, get a plant down on Brick. And even though they ended up dropping the Diffuser, they didn't let that stop them. They quickly and decisively realized the options that they had, made a play. And with Spiker also making a very good individual decision to fall off that plant and push the Dorms player with the Skeleton Key, just brought back a very narrow round. So XG now with a reattempt yet again of the second floor hold. We'll see the adjustments. They try to make one final time here to save their butts inside of this matchup. Now getting three rounds consecutively. That's only to trigger overtime. It'll be a third overtime in a row in terms of these final oh, matches wow. as well. We'll have to see if they can summon the strength to get that far. It is not necessarily looking like, at least for me, they might be able to do it. But at the same time, we've already seen one good adjustment happen on their basement hold. Very much in the cards, we can see the same thing happen for the upstairs play also. Also, for Mirage to be denied a regulation victory, it just took one 1v2, and then to be denied an OT victory, it took another 1v2. The little things that can screw you in the end, whether you're attacking or defending on Oregon or playing on any map in the game. Of course, for OXG, we'll need to see some improvement on those defenses. They have already taken their attack timeout to, unfortunately, not great effect, as you can tell. Carabella have also just been playing a very nice game overall. Still some mistakes, as you'd expect from a new team, but vast improvements over their game earlier against M80. We'll see Spiff go up inside a big tower and replay some of the things we've seen before, but still only rocking with that Hibana. Got to be careful about this impact tricking, John, because if they don't, their hard reaching will be destroyed again. Huh? off this time it looks like as the impact trick comes in just a little bit too late unfortunately only manages uh, to get that second God. set of the x kairos the first one does go off the hitch i think we might have actually seen an attempt to impact those first few but it may have missed it looks like once again the timing of the explosion happened just as we also saw the breach go off so it could have just been some unfortunate timing for the defending player as well there either way pb actually have the angle open this time so they do have an avenue to move forward and they were able to make it work without that avenue forward last time. So looking right now, already starting with over half, well, albeit only slightly over half the round to go, but still now half the round to go. Looking in a very good position. Spiff, unfortunately, taken down early on. That was the main attic player, and Yaga making a very good individual play, going for that flank, taking advantage of all the PB, doing their isolated things, maybe not everyone being able to watch drones. Gets the flank off, and now man advantage goes to OFG. Parabell will still have a lot. They have that attic angle, and they have that match to better angle, albeit the latter is the only one they're actively playing right now. But with Spike for a trophy and Skies creeping on in, white player now down as well. PB are not looking to waste any time or mince any words. Sky just barely has a safe pocket as well beyond that toxic babe, so he's gonna be able to get the plant down, but no, a second one works its way in, forces him into the open. Dream is ready for the defensive end of this one. He shuts down the attempt to move forward. Skies is knocked, and on top of that, the case is dropped. Robbed Fish with a nice nade to once again finish more of the defending players off. Reopens the window for PB to try and make this attack work. A little over 30 seconds, so they're not completely done just yet. And Foxe now claiming another kill. It certainly put PB in a bit of a dire position. Foxe also continuing to maintain the entryway over by Big Window, blocking off any refrag that they would attempt to go for and dream with just the perfect timing on the peak, just when Spiker had triggered and had to try and knock out the Banshee. You see him peek out and knock out the player who's attempting to take down that utility. Laxing is the only one that remains. Oxygen are playing this perfectly inside of the 1v2, just slowly but surely reeling him into their own setups. And with that, we'll see Fox they claim one more kill to shut out the team entirely. Really got to give it to Yaga on that flank earlier as well, whether that was a call made by the team or an individual decision made by Yaga. It made what was still a viable strategy for Parabellum being just flooding into the site much more difficult to make work. Almost basically evening out for Parabellum now being able to open up that wall, whereas in two rounds ago, they couldn't open it up, but had the 5v3. This time they opened it up, but now we're in a 4v5. So just straight up flooding into the site, even though Skies very narrowly was able to get the bomb down because of that slight little pocket he had evading the smoke, doesn't end up working out. But as opposed to OXG, PB have their tag timeout. They have that ability to take a pause and to stop a potential comeback as there's still two more rounds to go before OXG can even start to win this out beyond regulation. So we'll see what they work on inside of this tag timeout, of course. More than likely going to be seeing OXG bargain forward, turn potentially towards the basement as they made some great adjustments towards it and seem to have a pretty definitive hold, but the same adjustments could be made by PB if they attempt to go back. There's That's a little bit of a gamble that OXG need to decide on if they want to make a return to that, where, of course, we've already seen some success for PB, or if they want to go for the one of the first floor sites, which would potentially be worse just from their own base setup. They are going to make that return to the basement when everything is said and done, however, and the tack pause is finished. 
And always comes back to base with a lower game. It always does. Makes sense. Again, it is by far seemingly the easiest site to win as a defender. Now hear me out. What if we stopped going to basement and instead do what happened earlier and just go to dining and meeting? Is that smart? No. However, is it funny? A bit. A bit funny. It is a little especially, bit funny. Especially if your attacking team gets a flawless on you and then, that was, and then it just doesn't really look like a good decision at all. But. Still funny. Yeah, yeah. Still funny. funny for us. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Are we playing? No, no. Oh, actually, going back to that basement site, of course, we have all the usual suspects in the lineup. The Electra Claws, the ADSs, the Magnets, and likely playing the same positions that we've seen up until this point. But Parabellum have an operator in the cards that could be useful for just tipping things in their scales. The Ying has not been banned. We've not seen it much in this Oregon game so far. With the Thatcher EMPs as well, her main two nemeses, the ADSs and the Magnets, can be disabled wherever they push, be it laundry or bunker. If Parabellum want to just get one cheese round, they have the lineup to do it. Parabellum proceeding pretty slowly after we see the fish make a pretty booming entry into Yellow Hall to start things out from Small Tower side. Really droning, more than likely indicated they have zero resistance from oxygen on this side of the map. And indeed, that is the case. Even looking into areas like security, there is nothing poking up right now from oxygen. They had a little bit of positioning towards backstairs, but that is it. And I believe that player will immediately give up that position if any form of challenge comes his or her way. And yep, there we go. New is already back down to the bottom of the stairs. It was really just the kind of spawn peak for him. And we're back to the same positions that we had before. Don't you love Oregon? You know what's gonna happen. It's always predictable. And if that's your thing, if you just like being in that comfort zone for about two minutes of the round, this is your map. And let me tell you, if Spiker survives to the late round, you will not be having a good time because those candelas will be flying everywhere. Fish has already worked his way down to the bottom of Freezer Stairs, by the way, not to let that go unstated. He is droning right now, but nobody's actively playing Freezer itself. There are just feet holes and head holes watching the walk down to Freezer at stopping him from moving forward. All the hatches are opened up, save for the Freezer one, still electrified. But what is, does Laxing have any more of those EMPs? We know he's on drone right now. Laxing, please get off so I can see if you have some EMPs, see if you open that. Either way, I think, has, I think he has one left. He, either way, if he has one left, that means they won't be able to destroy the EDSs and magnets later, but they'd be able, able to open up the freezer hatch, which would make fish very happy. See here, as we are going to see quite a few nades get dumped into the lower level here. The attackers try to line up success for themselves. Three out of four of the nades they bring using those past few seconds. Still one more sitting in their pocket. We can confirm that Laxon does still have one more of those EMPs. And they're still able to, from audio cues I was getting at least, oh, knock out things in Freezer. They just went down to the bottom of the stairs and they get shot it. So they didn't have to waste that final EMP on it. So they can still keep one in the pocket for this execute. Like you were saying, knock out the ADSs and whatnot. Let that third grenade ring out. Well, more truly as well. Now look at him cooking that EMP. There it goes. Magnets disabled. Dream about to be put in a montage, but it's Sweater with a beeline on the spiker. The Ying goes down and the ace up their sleeves now gone. OXG with the man advantage. A C4 and everybody waiting with open arms for PB to push. It's moving in, looking for his initial target. He will find him at heavy cost to his own HP. Yaga as well finds one from the Nitro. Foxy picks up a second personal kill on this round. Laxing already down to just being the last player alive. He'll get one player down. Doesn't even get the confirmation, though, as the trades immediately roll in for the rest of OXG. And they nearly complete the set now. Just one more round to go, and they will trigger overtime. I think we got 45 rounds on us. <laughs> I mean, we're, all, we're already 41 there. True, yeah. We don't really have a few more to go. Only a, it's basically <laughs> Might as well get the full drop set. at the bucket at that point. <laughs> Admins, can we just can we just give OXG this round? Just make it happen. <laughs> I don't think Parabellum will like that. I don't much. think I don't Parabellum think Parabellum going to contest. Spiker, that. the amount of hate DMs I'd get from Spiker would be like, <laughs> why would you do this to me? Protect your bombs from being defused <laughs> by I thought we were friends. He would not be happy. But no, we will instead play out this final round. And it is not dorms, it is not basement, but we will be on this tertiary site. So theoretically, if there were ever a time for PV to close out this match, it should be this one. The site in which the attack has the greatest likelihood of winning, just given the strength of basement, and the amount of times that dorms has been played. Will Parabellum go for split? Will they go for stage? The world is their oyster john in round number 12. But Lord knows, we'll make it at least enjoyable. See how it's going to look to proceed on this as well. Initially flirting with a Maverick pick, but that ends up going over towards Ash for Skies as he wants a bit more of a direct contender. He's going to play things out on entry. So we'll just be looking at only the Havana for the hard breach. I don't believe we will have any can openers either. No, none have been picked up. 
That is just going to be it. Only working with the Habana once again. Thankfully, it shouldn't be too big of an issue. They will, however, have to worry about once more. Bandit batteries, believe it or not, sitting on the other side of the stage wall from Foxy, which they do not necessarily have a way to counter. Thankfully, it's a... Ooh, the deployable shield, though, makes it a bit more difficult to actually get around the corner and knock those out. That may be a Attack bit more of a hard point than initially was led to believe from Oxygen. He stepped on a Guma, and I hear that'd be Fish, the aggressive entry himself, making a very quick inroad onto the top floor. He'll nade close on that concrete door where Sweater is playing, though he Attackers only suffer a tiny bit of damage. But anybody entering this top floor has to not only worry about Sweater, but also the player playing over by Big Window. I believe his viewers actually... No, he's dropped down. Doesn't matter. He's playing inside of security now, so it is only Sweater, and PB realize that. They immediately push on in, take control of Dorms and Trophy and the Hatch in particular. They can hold that attic as well. They don't need to directly push Sweater. They have what they need in the first minute. They have that top floor. They push the Alibi back. Now they can start working some angles around Kitchen or wherever they want to push. So as we reach the near halfway point here now, for the attack, once again, things remain quiet across the map for the most part. PB with top control, but looking to utilize it to get themselves a first kill, or at least an intel which can lead into one, and they have not been able to find that amount of control just as of yet. OXG does peel back, at least initially looks like they're going to peel back most of their showers pressure. Mute's going to stick around for a little bit longer, since once again, they are not being heavily contested as of yet downstairs in that hold, but certainly wanting to think about it sooner rather than later with the way that PB has been able to burst in quite suddenly on a few of these rounds. They have to start getting a bit nervous considering there hasn't been a whole lot of follow through as of yet from the attackers. Especially nervous, at least a little bit, maybe not nervous, but cautious of Sweater. They didn't need to deal with him with two minutes left, but now with one minute left, they've at least got to be aware of him. They've let him survive inside of Attic, but the longer they wait and they don't clear him out, the likelier and likelier it gets that he'll make a play, but Spiff is waiting. Spiff knows. And does he whiff, my friends? Say it with me. No, he does not. Man advantage for Parabellum. Looking to attack that dining side. We saw Dream rotate to showers earlier. One more player to catch them off guard. And one more player falls to Parabellum. And now with that, Parabellum seemingly with full control of the situation. Just need to follow through onto the site. Yaga Foxe Noors are all that remains for the defense here. They continue to sit back, wait this one out. They cannot afford to play aggressively, but at the same time, the sky is falling up from beneath them. Noors excels in that environment, though. And he's able to catch Spiff. Gets a second one as well. The numbers are even, but finally, he'll be traded. Foxe there for the assist and no confirmation on the Noors. No chance of a revive whatsoever. And Laxing now with a relatively secure plant position on the inside of Kitchen. He'll come himself fully to it. Spike with great overwatch. Yeah, exactly. Nearly gets two players down and nearly seals the deal with that second player. But indeed, it'll be his teammate that locks it in instead. PB, take this matchup at the tail end of regulation. Beautiful play by Spiker on the coverage right there. Although you gotta give credit where credit is due to Newers and Fox A as well at the very end. But Newers in particular for also bringing that one back. But ladies and gentlemen, if you saw stage two of the NAL last year and you thought, man, what a competitive league this it's crazy. is. It's crazy. It's crazy. Nobody knows what's going to happen. Well, I imagine a lot of you are home are thinking, oh, PB lost a 7-3 to M80 earlier. I've got to take an L to OXG today. Did you see OXG 